What's up about penguins? Today we're going to do number two, which is on the 2013 exam on photosynthesis, and we do a little bit of the speck analysis. Um, so here we can see a um, speck graph is from uh, absorbance to spectrum, and this is showing us how much light is being absorbed by these two different pigments. Um, and so that gives us a little bit of background. It says an absorption spectrum indicates relative amount of light absorbed across a range of wavelengths. The graphs above or on the other side <laughs> represent the absorption spectrum of individual pigments isolated from two different organisms. One of the pigments, chlorophyll A, is found in green plants. The other, bacteriodopsin, is found in our purple photosynthetic bacteria. The table shows the approximate ranges of the wavelengths of different colors in the visible light spectrum. So they want us to identify the pigment, whether chlorophyll or bacteriodopsin, is used to generate the absorbance spectrum in each of those different graphs. And then we want to explain and justify our answer. So let's blow this up a little bit so we can see it. So if we look at graph one, we can see that there's this peak here. This peak is showing me that there's a high amount of absorbency. And then I can see kind of there's these lower ranges here. If there's a low range, that tells me that the light is being reflected or transmitted. So the reason why my shirt is red is because of the fact that the red light is reflecting off my shirt and it's going back to your eyes. So you see that red light um, versus all the other pigments are being absorbed. And so since I see that there is a low absorbency in that blue and red range, that tells me that blue and red together give me purple. So graph one must be bacteriodopsin. Then if I look at graph two, I see that there's a low amount of absorbance in this 500 range. Um, and so that tells me that our green light is being reflected. So uh, graph two is looking at my chlorophyll. And so they wanted you to talk about number one, give me the right graphs, bacteriodopsin versus chlorophyll. And then you had to explain why we see the bacteriodopsin being purple. And it has to do with because it absorbs light in the green range or it's reflecting back violet or red blue light. Um, and so that tells us that it appears to be purple. And then for the other one, we want to explain why the chlorophyll pill is green is because it is going to absorb light in the red and blue ranges or it will reflect the green light, which is what we talked about. So in graph one, bacteriodopsin is used. Um, and then we see that in graph two, we see chlorophyll A. They know that graph one is showing our bac bacteriodopsin because there's a low absorbency rate for the color violet. Um, and it reflects rather than absorbs that purple light. So then it talks about how graph two is chlorophyll. We know this because of the fact that there is a lower level of absorbency um, in the, the wavelength that has to do with green light. And that green light would not be absorbed and it would instead be reflected. So in the experiment, they give you these identical organisms that all have graph two. So you're pinpointing now on graph two. And they want you to say, OK, well, if I give three different wavelengths, I've got a 650. 550 and 430 nanometers. They want you to talk about predicting the relative rate of photosynthesis in each of those groups and then justifying those predictions. So let's blow this up a little bit and look at it. So if we look at 430, 550, and 650, what do we see? Well, we see that at 430, I have a higher amount of absorbency. And so if I can absorb more light, then I have more energy. If I have more energy, then I'm going to be able to um, produce more NADPH, more ATP, and that's going to allow there to be more of the Calvin cycle undergoing. 550 is probably going to be my intermediate rate because, sorry, 650 will be my intermediate rate because I don't absorb the most amount of light, but I also don't absorb the least amount of light. And so you can see that it's going to make an intermediate amount of the NADPH and an intermediate amount of the ATP, thus producing an intermediate amount of um, the G3P that's made in the, um, the Calvin cycle. And then 550 has the lowest amount of absorbency. So since it's not absorbing that much light, it doesn't have the energy that's needed to produce the ATP and the NADPH that's required for the Calvin cycle. So it's going to have a very low rate of photosynthesis. And so that's what they come up with. They say, okay, well, 430 is our highest rate, 650 is our intermediate, and then 550 would be our lowest rate. And then you had to give the uh, justification. So um, the highest level of absorbency occurs at 6, 450, therefore is the great amount of energy that's available to drive photosynthesis. Um, 550 had the lowest level of absorbance uh, occurring at 550. Therefore, the least amount of energy is available to drive or that you talk about the intermediate, how it has an intermediate amount of energy and thus an intermediate amount of energy to um, drive photosynthesis. So student talks said second group of organisms illuminated by the 550 is going to have the lowest level of photosynthesis. This is because the light capturing component has low absorbance in the light 550. 
It will be slow because it's not able to capture enough light to excite electrons and produce ATP and ADPH. They then go on to say the 650 is going to have the highest, higher rate of photosynthesis than the second group, but lower than the third group. So it's telling us that that's the intermediate. They then go on and say that it will absorb more light than the second and be able to send more ATP and ADPH um, to the, the light dependent reaction. I'm sorry, from light dependent to light independent. Um, then they talk about 430. It's the highest rate of photosynthesis because it is going to absorb more light. Um, more light then gives you more NADPH and ATP um, for the Catholic cycle. So then our third part, again, goes back into evolution. So bacteriodopsin has been found in aquatic organisms whose ancestors existed before plants evolved in that same environment. We want to come up with some evolutionary history um, of the plants that could have resulted in the predominant photosynthetic system that uses only some of the light of the visible light spectrum. Because we're not using green, so why are we only using some? And so there's a lot of different options here. You can talk about how the green light is being absorbed by um, the bacteria adopsin, so it wasn't available. Um, that there were this unabsorbed wavelengths of light that were available that they could exploit. Absorbing visible light um, provided too much energy, so if they used all the energy, that's too much energy. Absorbing light from ultraviolet would be damage the, the organism. You kind of think about how um, ultraviolet light right now is causing damage to our cells. It causes mutations. Um, and then absorbing light with longer wavelengths doesn't have enough energy. And then the appropriate reasoning, natural selection favored those organisms that relied on pigments that absorbed available light. So if you're absorbing more light, then you're going to be uh, able to survive and pass on those traits to your offspring. And if symbiosis had the chloroplast evolved from the cyanobacteria with pigments that only use those certain bacteria, I'm sorry, the certain wavelengths, um, talk about genetic drift, that there was an elimination of pigments that absorb certain wavelengths. So if they absorb too much light, then we're going to see that they're going to die off and we won't see um, those ones surviving. And then mutations could have altered that pigment they used by the organism. So they talk, they say aquatic environment um, would have access to the blue and the cyan colors of light. Um, if they contain many pigments that absorb that red light, they could barely gain access. Um, so the plant would not be able to absorb enough light for photosynthesis. They then said that if the plant had um, pigments that absorbed blue, that would be plentiful, and then the plant would thrive. That means it could then pass on its genes to the offspring to have a higher fitness, um, and thus we would see that they would be more efficient. So I hope that was helpful. And remember, a good success. Bye, y'all.